How do you identify these models? First of all, everything is very closely related to what we did for the armor models. If you have, look at the matrix, sample correlation matrix function. If you have a pure moving average process, then those coefficients are nearly zero when the lag k is greater than the order of the process. That's equivalent to what was in the univariate case. Likewise, if you look at the partial correlation matrix function, then those estimates will be near zero when the, for a pure autoregressive model, when you get to lag k greater than the order p. So that's the same thing as before. There's also what's called sample Q condition partial correlation matrix functions. It's complex and in general not so useful. So I just wanted to mention that it's there, but stick to what we've discussed using the goal ARIMA table, and also meaning that if you have a, an ARIMA model, well, then you have combinations, and well, that's how life is. Now, pre widening was something we did last week. Now, pre widening in a multivariate model is not the same as what we did last week. What you would do if you do this is that you fit univariate models not to just one of the processes, but to all of the individual time series. And then you look at the residuals from that and you try to see what can you add and look at the cross correlation between them and compare with the usual plus minus two divided by the square root of n, as in the number of observations. And since we do that filtering of all the models with individual models, it's not the same as what we did in chapter eight or last week. Now the problem in doing this is if you have a multivariate model, then what you may get here is that for the autoregressive part, you can you have things only on the diagonal to start with that will make everything white noise. And you can have the determinant of the true AR part and do put that in the diagonal. Now the determinant of a multivariate system has higher order terms than just the process itself, terms in B. And then you have the aggregate of your phi here multiplied on your theta. That could be your estimate of how the noise structure is. So basically what I'm saying is if you do this, you would end up having a model with a much higher order. So even though it's often done or suggested in literature, I would say don't do this. Do it step by step, modeling in a multivariate model, look at what is left and take it from there. So, how to do things? If you have centered data, so there's no mean value here, as said before, you can have this operator representation or you can have it with coefficient matrices spread out like this. In general, when you have this, there is no general analytic solution how to find these coefficients, except for the autoregressive model, you can do it there. But you also have to keep in mind when you do the dual walk equation, as we did in the univariate case, you cannot say so much about the variance structure of that. So maybe it's not the most appropriate thing to do in practice. It's just a way that works to get some estimates. But again, at least when I'm asking, whenever possible, you should always include a measure of uncertainty because the likelihood that you estimate the true value is zero. So you, you're left with estimation algorithms, which in practice means numerical optimization almost always. And how do you do that? Well, if you have a pure autoregressive model, also including exogenous input, then you can do least squares estimation. So you can do that instead of doing the dual walker. So you can go straight for least squares. If you have a multivariate Armax model, then there are basically two options. The so-called split method due to Henrik Split, a former professor here at DTU Compute. We'll talk more about that uh, in the next lecture, show you, but have a look at the paper here as preparing for that. It has some quite advanced linear algebra, some places in there. Basically, it's trying to do some least squares approximations to the 
MA part there and doing some repeated um, modeling there to figure out how to model this. However, you can always do the maximum likelihood, but you should keep in mind that when you have models of a high dimension, consider the AMA 2,2 model from before, how many parameters do you have such a model? If it's a three-dimensional AMA 2,2 model, well, the 2,2 means you have four coefficient matrices, but it's each of them is three by three, so you get nine by four, which is 36 coefficients to estimate. And for those of you who haven't tried to estimate a lot of coefficients, it's not, unless you have some structure in it, it's very difficult to do just in the regular optimization, just throw it out there, and you're not sure at least always that you get to something sensible. So there are more examples, details on this in the book, and in the next lecture, we will focus on different estimation methods and pros and cons, but we'll save that for later. So the highlights for today, first of all, the closed loop representation as a multivariate transfer function here. So that's one representation, stepping on to the multivariate AMA model to make this up here more generic, in a sense. We can deal with the constant here. Typically, we just assume that it's zero, or do it once and for all, and then do the calculation as if zero. The stationarity and invertibility, well, compared to the univariate case, we just need to add a determinant. And also for the autocovariance matrix function down here, it's also quite straightforward to compare with the univariate case. We just have to make sure that whenever we swap the order of time, we have to transpose. And then I think the most important thing is that we can, I mean, maybe not the most, but one very important thing is they can take any multivariate AMA model and represent that as a multivariate AR1 model. It's just a dimension that becomes larger. One of the reasons why I like this structure is because when you have to implement something in a computer, it's nice if you only need to keep the most recent state and you don't have to remember, okay, this is like one, two, three, five, how do I index, how to do things? But if you can just look at the most recent, that's at least often easier to implement. And if easy to implement, then you generally make fewer errors and we all make mistakes. So whenever you can do something that can help you make fewer mistakes, do that. And that was all for now. See you back later.